The thing I love most about music theory is that there is always something to continue learning. And it's because of this I think many people are overwhelmed and turn away from it. However, knowing a little theory can go a long way and level up your production. In this video, I'm going to show you how to unlock music theory in 15 minutes. First, let's take a look at what defines music. Music is the art of arranging sounds in time through the elements of melody, harmony, rhythm, and timbre. Each of these elements form the main pillars of music theory. Before we dive into these elements, let's take a look at how sound works. Sounds are acoustic waves that travel through a medium such as air or water. The frequency of how often these oscillations occur is known as hertz. Humans can hear frequencies from around 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Take a listen to this sine wave at 440 hertz. Now take a listen to this piano at 440 hertz. These two are playing the same pitch, which is the fundamental frequency, but they have different timbre, which if you're unfamiliar with that word, it's just the characteristic of the sound. Timbre is what I would consider the first main element of music. It's the sound source and specifically the quality of that sound. I'm gonna dedicate a separate video to this as traditional music theory focuses on melody, harmony, and rhythm. So let's dive into the next main element of music, which is melody. A melody is a series of tones or notes that often has a rhythmic structure. It often uses tension and release as it's generally the main focus of the music. In Western music theory, all of our melodies boil down to 12 notes. These are the letters of the alphabet A through G, plus five notes that are in between that we refer to as accidentals. So that piano note we heard at 440 hertz earlier was actually the note A. The accidental above a white key is known as a sharp, so this is A sharp. We can also refer to it as B flat. It's the same pitch, but with two different names. So this is A flat or G sharp. If you're unfamiliar with the keyboard, I'd recommend pausing the video and memorizing the letter names relative to the black keys, meaning C is below the set of two black keys, G is in the middle of the three black keys, so on and so forth. Once you've mastered those 12 notes, they simply repeat up the keyboard. So we refer to all three of these notes as C, but they're in different octaves. An octave is what we refer to as an interval in music, the distance between two notes. Each octave doubles in frequency. So now that we know melodies are comprised of notes, how do we know which notes to use? A scale is any set of notes ordered off of a fundamental frequency, also known as a root note. The most common scale is a diatonic scale, which is seven notes, and you might have even played the chromatic scale already, which is every note consecutively. I like to think of scales as color palettes. They're essentially a set of tones that work well together. While there are hundreds of scales, you can unlock 24 of them right away using one formula, and that is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. A half step is the smallest interval you can play on the piano. It's also known as a semitone. Logically, a whole step is then two half steps. It's skipping every other note. So let's play the C major scale using that formula. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. A common beginner mistake is to say whole when hitting the first note. I like to say the root name and then use the formula. So C, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Let's try it on G. So G, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Notice C and G were all the same notes except for one key, which was F sharp. That's because C and G are a perfect fifth apart. In fact, all the intervals within an octave have a specific name, and it's worth trying to memorize those at one point. So you can start on any note and use this whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half formula to play a major scale. But what if I told you that there were actually seven scales already embedded in a major scale? Let's go back to C major, the easiest scale on piano. If I treat D as the starting point or the root note and play the scale from D all the way up to D, using the notes of C major, this is now considered D Dorian. If I treat E as the root note, that's Phrygian, and so on and so forth. These are known as modes. The most popular modes are the first, which is Ionian, and that's the major scale, and the sixth mode, which is Aeolian, and that's the natural minor scale. So if we treat A as the root note and use the C major notes, which are all the white keys, that's now the A minor scale. So C major and A minor share the same notes. We refer to this as relative keys. Can you figure out G major's relative minor? It's
it's E minor. It's pretty easy to find the relative keys in your DAW. All you have to do is shift some of the notes around. I'll have all the popular scales as well as chords and rhythms as free MIDI files. The link will be in the description. So now that we've unlocked dozens of scales, we can build melodies from these scales. But in order to build melodies, we'll need to know a little bit about rhythm. I think rhythm is the heart of music and the most fundamental component of that heart is pulse. Pulse is defined as a series of uniformly spaced beats. It's also known as tempo and measured in beats per minute or BPM. We group these pulses into what we call meters. And then each grouping of that meter is called a measure or bar. All the classical note lengths are relative to that measure. A whole note is a whole measure, half note, half a measure, quarter note, quarter measure, so on and so forth. Here I have the A minor scale on an instance of Astra, and I can see from the measure numbers at the top that these are whole notes. If I use the stretch marker in FL Studio and hold Option or Alt, I can snap it and make it half notes. Quarter notes. Groupings of three eighth notes sounds really nice. That's considered what we call a dotted eighth note. Next, let's shorten the sustain, which is another important characteristic of rhythm. When we move notes off of the quarter note or the pulse, that's considered syncopation. This can sound nice for melodies. I think one of the most helpful things is to think of the scales in terms of numbers. So in this case, we're in A minor, A is one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up the scale. Then you can start thinking of your melodies in new ways, like how do I get to one? How do I get away from one? It's often a great idea to start on the third or fifth scale degree, and we'll see why in a moment. Contrasting the motion, the upward and downward movement of the melody is a nice way to make interesting melodies. This melody sounds pretty interesting. As soon as we layer a second note, we have now entered the last main element of music theory, and that's harmony. Harmony is when two or more notes are played at the same time. When we hear these notes, a new sensation known as consonance or dissonance occurs in our brains. Consonance is associated with peace, resolution, and pleasantness, whereas dissonance is more conflict, harshness, tension, and that's why harmony is great for establishing emotion in your music. So this two-note harmony, known as a dyad, is consonant because it's a perfect fifth. Our ears like the ratio between these two frequencies. Whereas this dyad sounds dissonant. The most common harmony is known as a triad, which is a three note chord. To form any triad, all you have to do is find a note, now known as our root note, and move either three or four semitones up. So that means there's four types of triads, a major, a minor, an augmented, and a diminished. Let's try playing a triad based off each scale degree in the C major scale. You'll notice there are three major triads and three minor triads and one diminished triad. So you can see in the major scale or key, the one is major, two and three are minor, four and five are major, six is minor, and seven is diminished. These are the natural states of these chords. You can break these rules once you start learning them. Again, triads are the most basic chords. We can use what's called extensions by stacking more thirds, that's three or four semitone leaps, on top of the chord. So if I add a fourth note, this is known as a seventh chord. The next chord is a ninth chord, an eleventh chord, and then the thirteenth chord which uses all seven notes. The last important thing you need to know about chords right now are inversions. Inversions are when we reorder the notes of the chord. So the C, which is our root note, doesn't have to be at the bottom. If the third of the chord is at the bottom, that's known as the first inversion. And if the fifth is at the bottom, that's known as the second inversion. 
In your DAW, inversions are easy because you can just transpose notes up or down an octave. And the purpose of inversions are for chord movement, which means moving from one chord to another. When we have a set of multiple chords, this is known as a chord progression. Here's with an inversion. And here's with no inversion. The inversion seems a little smoother because there's less movement. There's a lot of theory behind making chord progressions, but here's three easy rules you can follow. The first is use stepwise motion, meaning just go to the next scale degree. Number two is to move to a chord that shares two of the same notes. And number three is to move to a chord that has the same quality, meaning a major can go to another major chord or a minor chord can go to another minor chord. Let's take a look at the most popular chord progression of all time, which is one, five, six, four, and see how it uses the rules. One jumps down to five, which is the same quality. Five goes to six, which is a stepwise, that's the first rule, and then six goes to four, which they share two of the same notes. So that's the second rule. So these were the essential things that I think you need to know to unlock music theory. As I said at the beginning of the video, studying music theory is a lifelong pursuit. So I hope you feel motivated to go out and learn more. We have tons of great lessons on splice skills to level up your music theory. Check out the description for a link. If you learned something in the video, had an aha moment, leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We're releasing videos weekly. It's the new year and I look forward to making new types of videos. Let me know in the comments what types of videos you'd like to see. As always, I hope you all stay inspired and keep creating. I'll see everyone next time. Later, y'all.